Yo, what is up guys, Shilfeed here, back bringing you another Borderlands 3 video. Now, after Gearbox decided to buff and nerf a bunch of the legendary weapons, I got interested in which weapons that got buffed are now great weapons to look out for, and which weapons are still mediocre or still not good. And yeah, I'm looking straight at you, Mr. ASMD. I was quite surprised with how good 5 or maybe even 6 or 7 of these weapons were after revisiting them in True Vault Hunter Mayhem Mode 3. Once again, if you find this video helpful, enjoyable or informative, why not just take a second of your time and help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you want more content from me in the future, thank everyone for watching and supporting, and without further ado, let's jump right into the video. To start it off, I want to make clear that I don't think that any of these weapons are OP or that any of them will change the meta or whatever. Some of them were in my opinion pretty good even before the buff, like the Pain is Power or the Maggie. Kicking it off with the Maggie, this Jacob's Revolver got a 35% damage increase buff and man is this thing fun to play with now. I used to love the Maggie back in Borderlands 2 and in Borderlands 3 the Smasher type revolver was still a lot of fun to use for me but it was just ridiculous that some of the purple rarity mashers were more powerful than the only legendary masher revolver in this game. With the damage increase now it finally feels as powerful again as it once was and if you can land all of the 6 projectiles it shoots on a crit spot say goodnight to your enemies. The gun is quite hard to control sometimes though so be wary of its high recoil sometimes and shaky gun movements. The Maggie is a world drop so you can get it at any time, anywhere, so make sure to be on the lookout for it. Man, I don't know if it was the Mera that made the next two weapons so damn powerful, or if I was just sleeping on them before. I mean, I knew that the COV Assault Rifle Painless Power was nice before, but the rest of the gun was probably the one that surprised me the most. The 25% damage increase this SMG got made it instantly one of my favorite Mali 1 weapons to use, since it is also one of the few Mali 1 weapons that has zero charge time. Thank god. I don't know what more to say other than go get this from Private Beans on Athena's after the side mission Invasion of Privacy and try it out for yourself. The same goes for Pain is Power. If the damage and the Creek reference wasn't enough for you before, it now has 25% more damage and still has its Creek reference. This thing will always set you on fire when reaching a certain threshold, so if you don't already have it, hope for it to drop for you as a world drop, try to get an artifact that increases the damage of the element you have just taken damage from and watch your enemies melt right in front of you. Two other similar COV weapons that I can recommend testing out now are the Skexes, which you can get from the legendary hunt enemy with the name Scrag in Ascension's Bluff and the Leno as a world drop and both of them felt awesome to use, especially on the Mara. The other two weapons that I would highly recommend checking them out again is the Ruby's Wrath rocket launcher that got a 10% increased damage buff and the Vlad of Phaser, a sword rifle with additional 15% damage now. The Ruby's Wrath still kinda suffers from a long cooldown of its tracker grenade since it is very hard to use without the smart rockets having a track target, but when you do hit your enemies with it now, Torque would be jealous of what Atlas has created here. Even though the damage increase of 10% doesn't seem like much, it was definitely noticeable, so try to get it when it drops from any lootable source for you. I think the phaser just got exactly what it needed, with an increase of 15% damage dealt, because whenever I was using it before, I liked everything from the fire rate, the optional shotgun mode, magazine size, the different elements, but what it was missing was damage in my opinion. That has now been fixed the weapon feels awesome, it's the world drop, check it out. Like I said, there were a few more weapons that got buffed with damage increases or even a reload increase for the sickle, which makes me wonder how slow this reload must have been before, because I haven't used it that much pre-patch and it still doesn't feel too fast, even with an increase of 25%. That being said, it's still a good weapon and what it has going for is the fixed projectile pattern and therefore reliability, but I just don't like the sickle pattern in general, but maybe that's just me and you find it more enjoyable. I didn't notice anything when using the 10 gallon TDO pistol, so I don't think the 8% damage increase is worth talking about. The Infinity pistol though has received probably the biggest buff alongside the Jericho with plus 40% damage, but it still manages to feel somehow weak when I was using it. And even though it is cool that it shoots its bullets in an infinity symbol pattern, the symbol should be a lot tighter for it to be effective in my opinion. It is probably better against enemies with bigger crit spots like spider ants or whatever, but still the damage is not high enough even with infinite ammo. The Jericho on the other hand was quite fun to use with its mortar but not really reliable and kinda hard to predict where the projectiles will hit, also not very usable other than in open areas with a bunch of targets close to each other. The only other weapon that kinda surprised me was the Vanquisher which special ability is to gain increased fire rate while sliding and I still think that it is not really useful and kinda gimmicky. The plus 20% damage it received felt actually pretty good so you might want to give it a try. The Tribold 
and conference calls still felt mediocre at best sometimes. Both suffer from slow fire rates, too much in my opinion. And the increased damage of 25% for the tribolt and 15% for the conference call is nice but not greatly noticeable when I was using it. The devil's foursome looks nice and can deal a lot of damage but you have to depend too much on your environment to suit the weapon for it to be effective and even then it's not satisfying enough when hitting your target, even with the 13% damage increase. The alchemist didn't feel too good for mobbing since it only damages your enemy after sticking its projectiles into them and then reload for them to explode but it felt good against bosses like the grave rod and the 25% damage increase doesn't hurt for that. The only weapon on this list that I just can't stand is the ASMD. In my opinion maybe even the worst legendary weapon in the entire game with its constant switching between orb and bolt and for some reason it is doing this itself sometimes and it is just frustrating and I hate this rifle. Even with the 28% damage increase it doesn't do nearly enough damage against anything if you manage to somehow hit your targets with the explosion. Don't use this gun it's just awful. Anyway that's all of the weapons that received the buff. Like I said none of them are now so good that they become the new meta. At least I don't think that's the case and some of them might work better depending on what character you're playing with. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I don't want to push you too much to leave a like but again it will help me out a lot and maybe even subscribe for more content from me in the future. I'm almost at 1000 subscribers now and I still can't believe that there are so many people that enjoy my content and I want to thank everyone who's supporting me and gave me a chance. I will try to continue getting better for you guys. Thanks again for watching. Have a nice Sunday and I see you in my next one.